moments that try the human soul so violently and so perplexing that if the truth were told, all of us have had moments that we wanted to throw up our hands and walk away. Particularly painful is discouragement in the life of the believer because as we travel from season to season, it is not just the perils that we face, but it is seeing the wicked go forward while the righteous are held back. Discouragement can creep in secretly, hide behind clothes, makeup, hairdos. Discouragement is so bold that it will even hide behind a smile. It will always ride to work with you. And if it doesn't catch a ride going to work, it'll catch a ride on the way back home. Discouragement will go into a tent. It will walk right into a Section 8 neighborhood. But don't think that it stops. Discouragement will walk right into a middle class house. It won't just stop there. It'll go in a mansion and sit on the side of a jacuzzi and tell you life is not worth living. If you listen at discouragement, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to think that life is not worth living and secretly behind the facade of a smile and a good morning and a praise the Lord and a how are you, you will wonder if you're ever going to get out of what you're into. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. Sometimes I, I see people succeeding who didn't pray nearly as hard, work nearly as long, and it seems like they seemingly have moments of victory in close proximity so I could see it. Not while I am having a similar experience but while all hell has broken loose in my life and I am going through agony and tragedy, seemingly they are having victory and triumph. And if you are not careful, the very sight of their prosperity becomes your agony. And seeing them go forward will be a source of such continued frustration that it is not your test that baffles you, but their success agonizingly displayed before you makes you despair of life until David says in 37 and 1 fret not thyself over evildoers how they prosper in their own way they shall soon be cut off he says in other words don't make a permanent decision over a temporary circumstance he says, don't allow a moment of agony to make you draw a conclusion about life prematurely. Because if you just keep on walking with God, God has a way of making everything all right. I was going through a major challenge in my life that was wearing me out, that was using me. And one of my students told me in a class that I was teaching, Lessons in Truth, she said, Les, until you handle it with grace, it will stay in your face. And it stayed there a long time. 
Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. Are you learning anything or are you doing it over and over and over again? Insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. I find so many passive Christians who have been taught the type of faith that anesthetizes your dream originally given to us as a tranquilizer to make us content for heaven while others possess earth. My faith is a radical faith. It's not a passive faith. It's not an indifferent faith. It's not a faith that will take down on what the scriptures has promised me. You can't just sit on your couch and wait on the Lord. Can I tell you, you cannot sit on your couch and wait on the Lord. Life will pass you by. You're not waiting on the Lord. The Lord is waiting on you. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. How do we get stuck? A friend of mine working on a job, loved the company very much, expected to retire there. And one day they call him in the office, ask him for his badge and identification, told him he was fired and he had to leave then. He was devastated. And if you came anywhere near him, he will tell you his story. As we all have stories. Even when he got a job, he went on the job telling anybody who would listen how they fired him unjustly. And he always ended with, it wasn't fair. Life isn't fair. It's not fair that birds eat worms, and they do. Don't deviate, don't procrastinate, don't become frustrated. All you have to do to win this battle stay on track. Where there's a will, there's a way. In fact, we are often tormented by vision because the visionary sees what shall be and wakes up to deal with what is. He warns us and declares to us that the steps implies process. Inspiring habits. Means it's going to take a while. Means that you can't get to the destination just because you want it, just because you saw it, just because you like it, just because you need it. You know, when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind clear your of mind. all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, and you can either let it destroy your life, or you can build upon I'm it. I'm not going to let this destroy You me. can permit it to let it hold you down, or you can decide, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen, will happen. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop, stay busy, work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. I was thinking about Hebrews 11, and it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. See, we got all of this teaching about faith, 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 faith. But we're talking to people who have settled all around me, I see people who've settled, who've settled with less than what God promised them, who've just made do out of their life. All around me, I see people who stopped swinging. I've seen people who've gotten 40, 40, you quit at 40? 
Well, if it was gonna happen, it would have happened. So I'm getting older now, and I'm just gonna let myself go. I, I'm not doing it. I refuse to settle. I'm not picking out no caskets. Surprise me. I know you get a discount if you buy early, but I am not planning to die. I'm planning to live. Surprise me. I will not settle. It may take longer. It may be harder. I may have to go this way when I thought I could go that way. That's the kind of people I like to run with. I like to run with people who will not take no for an answer. I like to run with people who refuse to settle on less than the best for what God has in your life. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. Your mind goes on automatic. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. You have got to make a declaration Don't stop. that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. The challenges of life. You need some kind of trophy that proves that he that is in you is greater than he that's after you. Glory to God. We're not going to live and die and shout and fall out and talk in tongues and not produce anything. When Jesus came down to the seashore and saw the disciples who had been fishing all night, he didn't ask them how long had they been fishing. He said, have you caught anything? He didn't ask him, how old are you? He said, have you caught anything? Hope is an expected end. I'm gonna build something. I'm gonna make something happen. I am not going to live and die and not leave anything in the earth as a sign that I was here. I'm gonna build something. I'm gonna leave stones as a memorial. I'm gonna leave an ark on a hill. I'm gonna leave some sort of sign that my children and my children's children will know that when I pass through the world, the Lord was with me. I will not settle. Even if I have to start over, even if it took longer than I expected, even if I have to make payments, even if I have to crawl on my belly. Ah! So when you begin to look at your past, give an interpretation that empowers you. That's where I used to be. That's not where I am now. I'm growing. I will not settle. I will not settle. I will not do it. I will fight you every morning. You whip me on Tuesday, you're going to have to whip me on Wednesday. You whip me on Wednesday, I'll see you Thursday afternoon. I will fight you every day. I will not settle. It's how you tranquilize your hope. Because you don't want to deal with the pain of having not attained. So you move the goal to line up with where you are. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. He said those that make things happen and those that don't know what happened. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. You wanted a good husband, but you wasn't a good wife. You wanted children, but you wasn't a good parent. You wanted a good wife, but you wasn't a good man. 
I measure the value of a man by how hard he presses. That's how you can determine who you're fighting, by how hard they press. How hard you press tells me how hard you hit. You can be all big and muscle bound and still not have no force behind your punch. Force, kinetic energy, energy in motion. You can't have energy sit. Move so you can Energy go. is measured by motion. So you can get on with your life. That's why the devil wants you to sit. Sit down and shut up and feel sorry for yourself. But you ought to blow the devil's mind this morning. I feel a pressing spirit in here this morning. I feel a determination in here this morning. I feel a fight in here this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, get on up them steps. Don't you get 40 and get tired? Don't you get 50 and get tired? Don't you get 60 and get tired? Don't you get 70 and get tired? Don't you get 80 and get tired? Get on up them steps! Understanding and knowing that we can move from where we are, that we can begin to design the kind of life that empowers us, that gives us happiness, that enable us to be on top of who we are, knowing that as we begin to explore new horizons and new vistas in life, that as we begin to, to focus on developing ourselves, as we begin to elevate ourselves and not to follow the crowd, activating the thinker in us and disciplining the emotional part of ourselves, it's not easy, but through practice and practice and practice, practice makes what? Absolutely not. Dismantle that belief system. Practice makes improvement. You can always better your best. You can always go beyond anything that you have ever done. You never hit a state of perfection. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice. You'll get better and better. And there's still some things that will happen to you that will catch you on the blind side that you did not anticipate. Sometimes a visionary cries out on the inside and says, God, don't even show me what shall be. Because every time I shout and dance over what you showed me, I go home to a harsh and painful, bleak, dark reality. And the fact that I am torn between what shall be and what is creates agony in my life. The Bible said hope deferred makes the heart sick. Uh, there are moments that I'd rather not know that I'm going to be king if you're going to send me back out into the field to take care of sheep. Why didn't you just hide that I was going to be king so I could be satisfied taking care of sheep? But because you told me you had more for me, I, I, I wanted to hasten the process to get to my destiny. Oh, now, now I'm not happy doing what I used to be happy doing because I'm tormented by what shall be. I want to hasten my process so that I can get to an expected end. But that cannot be done because a blessing given too soon is not a blessing at all. I can give my son the car keys now and tell him to go to the store. But had I given it to him when he was five, it would not have been a blessing at all. Same car, same son, given too soon. He can't handle it. So would I be a good father if I gave him a good thing too soon? Sometimes my goodness is proven by my ability to say not yet. The younger brother, the prodigal son, teaches us emphatically that if we get what is ours too soon, we cannot handle it. That the same thing that should make us praise the Father will drive us away from the Father if we get it too soon. The Bible said, he said, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. The Father gave in and gave it to him and the blessing drove him over the edge. He ordered you to go up the steps. He wouldn't let you bypass the process. All those people who offered you quick deals, the reason the deal went down is because God ordered you to go up the steps. He didn't intend for you to go up the elevator. He knew if you got there too fast, you weren't gonna be ready for it. He slowed down your process. He let the deal go down. It wasn't time yet. What you are and what you become depends on how you use your time. You can decide that you're gonna stand up to life. You have the power to make that decision. You have something that you brought to the universe 
and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and seeing what I have within me and becoming the best at it and mastering myself I grant you you'll never ever be without the thing that I'm thankful for is to know that God orders the steps it, it helps me to understand that I am not wandering aimlessly that I'm not just moving on my own that there is a course for me to take and that I can't graduate till I take it that there is a path for me to trod that God isn't making this thing up as he goes I thought he was making it up as he went that's why I prayed so he could make it up my way I prayed to abort the process I prayed to speed it up I prayed to get out of things that he wanted me to stay into I prayed that I wouldn't have to endure some things that he wanted me to endure. I, I was working on the destination, but he was working on me. And sometimes he made me wait. He made me slow down and said, no, you skipped that step. Go back, do that again. If, if you skipped it with Jimmy, I'm gonna send it back with Freddie. If you skipped it with Willie, you're gonna have to go through it with Roger. If you skipped it with Sally, you're gonna go through it with Susie because all of these are tools that I'm using to work on you. I'm not preparing the blessing for you. I'm preparing you for the blessing. The blessing is already prepared. Oh my God. The blessing is already prepared. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love it. D did you know your blessing is already ready? That is that is already in place, that God isn't fixing it up right now. It's already done, that the work doesn't have to be applied to where you're going. The work has to be applied to you so that when you get where you're going, you can have handle what you gotta handle and so oh God help me preach the steps the steps the steps touch three people and say the steps the steps the steps so part of beginning to get unstuck you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you you've got to change your strategies and changing your strategy means reinventing your life recreating you and you have the power to do that you can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. So as you're in the process of reinventing your life, write a description of the kind of person that you want to be. What are the things that you must overcome? What qualities about your personality you know that you're going to have to change because those particular characteristics are liabilities to you? What are your assets? What are your strong points? Go for walks. Do some things for you. Just go for a stroll so you can engage in some reflective thinking on life, on yourself. Listen to upbeat music, music that inspire you. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. At times you won't want to come out the house. You just want to stay there. It's called life. God has ordered steps. My prayer has always been Lord, don't give me more than I can handle. If I knew better. You know when to bless me. I would have done better. You know how to bless me. You know when I'm ready to be blessed. Teach me patience with the process. Go through the process. 